another example from a prominent publication. This one is on uh, gas prices. So this is probably something you're very well aware of um, if you are driving. Um, and so here's a map that was published around Thanksgiving um, that shows that gas prices appear to be dropping, which is not really been my experience at the pump. So the graph was a little bit confusing to me. So I gave it a little closer look. So the first thing I did was look at that vertical axis, so the Y axis. And what I saw was that the price of gas is changing by half of a penny. Okay, so where the graph starts at is $3.40 a gallon. And then at the very end, it's dropped down to $3.38 a gallon. So that's a decrease of two cents, uh, which is, is not really what I would have anticipated from looking at the graph. Um, I also looked uh, along the x-axis, so that time axis, and I noticed there are only two marks on there, so November 22nd and November 29th. So this graph covers a week or two at most. So it's kind of a tiny time frame, um, and then that scale being distorted on the y-axis is definitely misleading. So adjusting that scale causes that data to be distorted. The Washington Post put together um, uh, an example, a more comprehensive graph here. So they actually have the data from um, almost a whole year on the gas prices. And so you can see that the gas prices have been going up, which is probably what your experience has been at the pump. And then what's cool is they highlighted um, in this little box here, the part of the graph that's shown in this blue. Okay, and so the blue graph is conveying the right information in terms of just the numbers, but it's distorting because of the scale on the graph. And so it makes it appear like there's been this sharp drop off in gas prices, um, where in reality it's just a, a two cent downslide a little bit. Okay, so adjusting those axes can really do a couple of different things. If you're changing the horizontal axis, so that is uh, what you typically call the X axis, and you change that time scale, you can zoom in on a small period of time that shows just what you want to show. Okay, so if you're trying to invest, convince someone to invest in your company, you can kind of zoom in on the part that shows, wow, look at, we, our company sold lots of things this month. Right? Whereas a picture of the whole sales for the year might give a really different picture. Okay? And then changing the scale on the vertical axis can make a very small decrease look like a sharp decrease, or it can make a very small increase look like a sharp increase. So adjusting either one of those axes can really um, change how you view that graph. Okay? So I'm gonna give you um, one to work on on your own. So this is Little League Results. So what I'd love for you to do, uh, we have four teams here. I'd love for you to pause the video and answer these four questions. So these are written on your guided notes. So um, go ahead and pause the video and give that a try. All right, so hopefully you paused the video and gave that a try. So on first glance, which team appears to have won twice as many games as the Panthers? So the Panthers is this last bar on the right. And so the team that looks like it's maybe gone twice as tall of a bar is probably the Bears, I would say. Um, says calculate the difference in the number of wins between the two teams from part one. So between the Panthers and the Bears. So it looks like the Panthers won about 21 games and the Bears probably won about 22. So uh, the Bears won one more game than the Panthers. So then was it actually twice as many wins? The answer is no, it was not twice as many wins. Um, so it was just an increase of one. And then it, why is this graph misleading? So this is another trick that can be done with the axes of a graph. So rather than distorting um, the, the change as you go along the scale, they just started the graph at 20. So rather than starting it at zero, uh, they started at 20, which is what then makes those two graphs appear to be one twice as tall as the other. 